Two C escapes. Wait, that's your line. Man! Two skip button. Uh, Wait, we're still here. Why are we still here? Because we need to get a jellyfish. We need to go jellyfishing. This is cute and peculiar, and peculiar enough. Just like Juniper's taste. She's sure to find satisfaction in this. I don't think you're ready to get jellyfish. <laughs> really? Juniper laughs, but then realizing I was serious, quiets down quickly. Oh, I mean, it's really adorable. Jellyfish are so weird. Just stomachs, tentacles, gonads. Isn't that all you need in life? I like an animal with a brain, personally. But to each their own. Eh, brains are overrated. Thanks anyway, Spunk. The sentiment isn't lost on me. Well, kids, I'm about done here. I don't have as much energy as you both do, so I'm going to skip ahead. Who needs energy when you can sleep? Naomi and Teo. I don't remember what we did last time. I feel like we had funnel cake last time. Then that means even more new scenes with Percy. Huh? That means even more scenes with Percy for the next round. Didn't I just say I think last time we did funnel cake? Yeah. So how, how is that new? The new scene for, with Percy in the next rounds. But it won't be new if we did it last time. Oh. Eh. Logic. No, there is no logic. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Teo and Naomi sneak into one of the shops on the boardwalk called the Sandy Bar, with little iconic saltwater taffy icons on each side. Meh. <sighs> Saltwater taffy, a staple of coastal life and commerce. On any given boardwalk, you're within spitting distance of at least three candy shops loaded with tasty treats. Yeah, I was right, because this one doesn't have skip. Have I had saltwater taffy? I think so. Mm-hmm, probably. I don't know. I mean, I don't know that it's memorable enough to care that much, but... Don't people Very love possibly. Salt water uh, yeah, they do. But more importantly, why are these two acting so childish about the whole thing? Like two kids in a candy store? I need to find out exactly what's going on. And more importantly, I need to see if they have any of those gummy sharkies in there too. Wow, I'm insulted. As I peer into the building, my senses are overwhelmed by sweet. My teeth practically hurt from all the surrounding sugar. Covering the walls are assorted containers holding various types of candies, a rainbow of colors and confectionaries, filled to the brim with saltwater taffy and covered in chocolates. Not only do I take note of the delectable candy, but I also notice all the kitties running around. I can't help but be reminded of the funplex. Same atmosphere, just fewer games. I look over to the person behind the counter and give them a nod of understanding. I feel you, noble cashier, in your quest to maintain peace and order. Naomi and Teo recognize me more than ever. Sorry. I'm not- The cops coming after you? Hmm? The cops coming after you? No, I'm not on call this week, but um, we implemented a new system thing, sort of, where because I'm one of the on-call leads, um, if the ticket escalates, 
it'll go to the other on-call lead first, if the fr actual on-call person hasn't checked in. Um, it'll go to that the other on-call lead first, and if he doesn't check in, then it pages me. Uh. Um, we set it up because recently um, the person who was on call a couple weeks ago had a power outage for a couple hours. And Not so, good. huh? Not good. Mm hmm. So she had no internet. So, um, she posted in the group of like, can someone cover on call while my power is out? But we didn't have like a system in place for it. So I think my manager freaked out a bit. Uh, so we set up this system as of yesterday. And now oh. I've gotten paged three times already. Oh, okay. Good system. 10 out of 10. Basically it means that whoever is on call isn't do it, putting the right settings or something, so it's continuing to escalate and page. Not fun. So yeah, sorry for the interruption. Clothes. Over here, Spunk. Come help us decide on what to get. I comply and go over to them, toward them. Naomi is huddled over a table and is filling her arms with various desserts. I want one of these, and two of these, and a handful of this one. Oh, oh, what's that over there? Oh, wow. I need apples. I have to get one of those, too. This is the best part about going to the beach. Look at how many different candies there are. I could just devour them all. I'm like, Taya didn't really strike me as the type to binge on, like, candies and sweets and dessert. But, but dessert is so good. It is. But binging on candies and stuff is unhealthy. And he needs to maintain that almost naked body. <laughs> Gosh dang it. Now I pegged Naomi as having a sweet tooth. But Teo, with all his dancing, I would have guessed him to stick to a healthier diet. Not necessarily, but considering how much muscle we see on him right now, I would have guessed a healthier diet. Wait, what was his lunch? Do you remember? I think I remember something we skipped over last week. Let's see. Pita bread and hummus. Right. That was one of the ones I complained about. For not being a real meal? It's a fucking snack. What's wrong with having a snack? You don't get enough nutritional value. Yeah. But this is a- this trip is a vacation for all of us, so maybe he's spoiling himself. So what do you think of the place? Ooh, me? Oh, I've been here before. Quite a few times. This is the most popular candy store on the boardwalk. My family and I would always stop by right before our long drive a long day of swimming, walking, and fun in the sun, a maximum sugar overdrive is a perfect way to end the day. They'd give me a fistful of dollars and cut me loose in here. A fistful of dollars? Whoa. A fistful. Whoa! They just let you get whatever you wanted? Dang, I wish I had your parents. I think I would prefer a 20 over a fistful of dollars. Cute. 
who could just see a young spunk here running around and stuffing candy into their face? A 20. Man, Rich. I'm just saying. Not gonna lie. I was a cute kid. Not so cute when overdosed on sweets, though. Oh no, Spunk is OD'd on sugar. <laughs> Both Naomi and Teo laugh heartily. <laughs> ah, ha 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 ha. Uh, I mean, they didn't exactly give me Fort Knox to blow on snacks. But it was still a nice little reward at the end of the day. Ah, Fort Knox is the 20. Yeah, that's a lot of money. I mean, for a candy store, yes. For a child. Mm-hmm. As I am a creature of habit, I'd always get salt water caffeine year after year. It's just the best feeling, munching on taffy while watching the waves crash into the sand. I remember back in the days when $20 was enough to buy like a mainstream video game on a console. A physical copy, in fact. Pre-owned, maybe? Hmm? Pre-owned, maybe? <laughs> Did you not live in that era? I think I'm I got Kingdom Hearts for 20 bucks. What? I think I got Kingdom Hearts for 20 bucks. When I was a kid. On sale, maybe? I think that was like 40 or 50 when it released. I swear when I was a child. Video games were like $20, because my nope. parents would give me about $20 at a time. And I was like, I can get one video game with this! No, by default, they were 40 or 50, uh, PS2 era. I mean, there were some N64 games that were like, and SNES games that were like 80 to 100. Like, and that was back in the day money. Kingdom Hearts games prices over the 13 years. Hey everyone, the Kingdom Hearts series turns 13 this year, this post is from 2015, and has been in the video game industry a long time. As we all know, video game prices keep skyrocketing, with next-gen titles expected to be sold at $70 the next few years at retail. As such, I would like to focus on the prices of each Kingdom Hearts game at its original release. This data was collected in America in the Midwest, as such it may not accurately represent what you bought the game for when it first came out. Kingdom Hearts PS2 2002, $20. Kingdom I Hearts don't... Chain of Memories Game Boy Advance 2004. $20. Kingdom Hearts 2 PS2 2005, $25. Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories PS2 2008, $30. Kingdom Hearts 358 Over Two Days DS 2009, $35. Kingdom Hearts Handel Birth by Sleep PSP Handel 2010, $40. Uh... I know what I paid. It wasn't on sale. These are the prices that they were. Let's say, I believe I spent more on Kingdom Hearts 1 than that. You probably did not get it at the original price then. I also bought it like years after it came out. Mm-hmm. When it would have when it would have theoretically degraded in price. Well it was still popular. I don't think I had a copy until King March 2 was out. 
because I've rented it for years. Like, video games were not always $60 each. I know that. They were definitely much less. I know for a fact, because I used to get $20 at a time. And I remember that at some point it basically jumped from 20 to 40 And suddenly I had to wait twice as long before I could get video games. And then it got to 60 And then I was old enough it didn't care. But when, like Kingdom Hearts was absolutely twenty dollars when I bought it. For that matter. documented. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find the original prices for other PS2 games. Yeah, they're... That's... It's not well documented, but like... No, it is not. Like, these were the prices. I don't know why you're talking like, no, it was never that low. Like, no, it, it absolutely was. Would have definitely depended on the game then, because there were ones that were way more than that. Pretty sure I remember buying Pokemon for like twenty dollars, maybe thirty. In conclusion, although you are only a cup, like only less than two years younger than me. You have shit memory of video game prices. And apparently, you started buying them as they were already rising. I mean, I also wasn't the one, like, I didn't get money from my family. Like, even with, for lunch, it was, I had barely enough to eat lunch. So, any money I was saving was like a penny a day at best. You say that like you didn't have video games growing up. Oh, I mean, I say that as I wasn't the one going out and buying, like, with my own money buying them. It was always, uh, birthday, Christmas stuff. Well, I had to use my own money because my parents didn't want to give me video games. See how that works? this yet? Yeah, I wrote that forever ago. Sorry, I was busy proving you wrong. Naomi suddenly gasps, interrupting my recollection. <gasps> what is it, Naomi? They have competo! I'm still confused. Is that a good thing? It's the best thing! There are these little traditional Japanese sugar candies that look like stars and are my absolute favorite! They're basically literally just sugar. 
Every time my mother would go to visit family in Japan, she'd bring me back some. But it's been years since I last had some. She squeals excitedly and runs over to a little stand that has a cute assortment of pastel sugar stars. We follow suit and make our way next to Naomi. Teo picks up a bag and brings it closer to his face, examining them. Okay. These are quite possibly the cutest candies I've ever seen. And they are so sweet! Because they're basically just sugar. They taste like you're just eating sugar. Oh, Naomi. Nothing sweeter than you. Wink. Wink. And that's a fact. I guess Naomi this, uh, is thus dateable by uh, Gavin, Teo, and Spunk? Uh, basically, it sounds so like... So popular. <laughs> that's not... That's not entirely true. I have to agree with Teo. No one is... Brought me more impromptu lunches at work than you do. Thank you. But these candies are still the sweetest. You both should taste these, by the way. I just know you'll love them as much as I do. Teo and I agree with the nod of our heads, and Naomi turns around happily with an armful of candy and treats. Like a dragon with her hoard, she heads toward the register when a kid runs smack into her. And a colorful explosion, candy spills everywhere, and Naomi falls over backward. Uh, you know, and... the fact that this kid has, like, normal amount of clothing on really accentuates the fact that Naomi and Teo are wearing hardly anything. <laughs> yeah? I instinctively go in to help Naomi up, but out of the corner of my eye I see the kid who bumped into her swiping candies off the floor and pocketing them. Hey! It's a classic move. We see it all the time with tickets and tokens at the funplex. And like the arcade, this is no different. It's so overused, Teo even sees it. He elbows me and points it out to my attention. But this is not my store, not my job. Do I step in or let it slide? Yeah, we don't need these trades. My first instinct was to help Naomi back to her feet, and that's what I'll do. Even though the kid is swiping sour gummies, I'm sure the cashier is on it. This isn't the first time, first time a child has tried to steal candy, nor will it be the last. I go over to Naomi and extend a hand toward her. She grabs a hold as I pull her to her feet. I collect Naomi's fallen candies as well, and I notice the cashier approach the kid. They demand the kid to turn out their pockets. It appears like the kid wasn't just picking up stuff from the spill. Those pockets were quite full. With a very disappointed frown, the cashier tells them to kindly exit the sandy bar, and the kid complies. The cashier and I exchange knowing glances. We are one and the same. Oh. After that excitement, I'm ready to relax on the beach and eat some of this candy. Wait, did she finish checking out though? <laughs> Wasn't she on her way to the register when she got bumped? Have some food. Me too. Me three. I can't quite leave yet. There's still one more thing I must do. Some salt water taffy. It's a crinkle bottom. Family boardwalk tradition, after all. Oh, yeah. Can't break tradition. Although, if we do, 
I wouldn't mind starting a new Bumplex Beach tradition with you. Wink. Is this flirting? Teo, please. This is one important, delicious decision Spunk has to make. And the only correct answer would be for them to choose the cotton candy ones. Cotton candy flavored taffy? Really? I wouldn't joke about something as serious as this. But it's like sickeningly sweet. I can't handle it. I can handle a truckload of sweets. Well, what would you choose then? Butter popcorn, obviously. I like a little salty with my sweet. But, but that's sacrilege. I'm much more of a purist. Getting in a fight over taffy flavors isn't necessary. Both taste great, but I already know what I'm gonna, I'm going home with. The law of sweet and salty. What's that spunk? The law of sweet and salty. Salty, sweet, grab bag. Oh no. The law of sweet and salty. This is an ice cream. Are you missing the joke I'm making? You're utterly missing the joke I'm making. Nope, no jokes. It's not even a Kingdom Hearts joke. No jokes. It's a Mystic Messenger joke. Not really a joke. Reference. It's a Mystic Messenger reference. Do you think I remember most of those references? The law of sweet and salty must be obeyed. Do you remember how long it's been since I've played that? I'm also eating popcorn, like, literally right now. I'm in favor of this one. I mean, I personally don't care. Hmm? I said I personally don't care. To appease my palate, I prefer a more complex profile of flavors. The love, sweet and salty! Listen, do you think I remember any references from that game? Honey butter chips. Oh, honey butter chips. I barely remember. Even that? Really? Yes. It's been like a year and a half to two years. It's been a while since I turned that on. I keep a box of honey and Buddha chips at home. I should eat some. I agree, I agree with Teo. Nothing beats buttered popcorn. Too. Excellent. I respectfully disagree with your opinions. But that just means more cotton candy taffy for me. I think that cup of popcorn covers it. Shall we blow this box to the stand? But I thought we weren't talking about ice cream. Ooh! They have popsicles too? No, he's talking about bombs. Once again. Naomi's got her arms filled to the brim with candy and she nods enthusiastically. Teo's picked out some of his favorites too. We each take our turns in line and before we know it, we're happily carrying our stash with us onto the boardwalk. Oh, I almost forgot. She stops abruptly, digs through her bag for a moment and pulls out the competo. Yes, I've been waiting for one since you pointed them out. Naomi opens the bag and both Teo and I pick one out. Popping the sugar star in our mouths, both of us smile wide, enjoying its sugary goodness. Love it. Oh, this is so yummy. For real, Naomi. It's my new favorite candy. They're literally just sugar-based hard candies. Sure. I'm trying to think of a good comparison. Okay, think of like, like a candy cane, but without the mint. Just the sugar part. I can't imagine that. Like, it's in little star shapes and it's colorful. 
so it's cute. But it doesn't actually taste like special. It's just sugar candy. <laughs> Some people like sugar. They do. Naomi clearly does. I don't know why Teo's also so sold. Like, oh man, it's my new favorite candy. Like, it's it's not that special tasting. It's don't fun. I like it. They're cute and small. It's very good. Maybe next time I'm at the Sandy Bar, I'll get some of these instead of that bait. Next time I'm here. Because with the fun flex riding high in the world, I bet we could afford it next time. And another? And another? Thank you for introducing me to a whole new world of flavor, Naomi. Anytime, Teo. If I can change your mind on candy, I can convince you to dance a little lighter on Showtime stage. It's a delicate cabinet! But then I wouldn't get to see you as much at the Funplex floor. Wink. Wink. In the thinnest end! They are on the beach. They are. Very true. I've got my candy haul. So my work here is done. I got places to be. And I want to spend some time taking in the sea breeze. I need to clear my senses of sugar, too. We'll catch up with you later, Spock. Once alone, I open my bag of saltwater taffy, pick one out, and eat it. I let the taste fully consume me. Now, this is a perfect vacation. The rest of the afternoon passes in a blur. The sun has gone down and Flotsam Beach is a calmer place. A more chill vibe as the day's manic energy is long since spent. It's also clear the group will be breaking up soon. They've already changed back to their regular clothes. Thank God! <laughs> Done with the beach as a whole. Some are talking about checking out the nightlife scene around here. Some just want to relax in their hotel rooms. Some are simply heading back to the city. Are you saying you don't want to check Teo out some more? You know what sounds more appealing than Teo is eye candy? If they had shown us the actual candy they were buying. Mood. I don't need Naomi in a swimsuit. Show me the competo! What about Gavin? Hmm? What about Gavin in a swimsuit? What about him? Where's Maybe the CG he... of him playing volleyball? Come on. If you're gonna tell me that they're playing volleyball, I wanna see the volleyball. I want action shots. Well, you can message the developers about it. Yep, I'll make sure to tell Two Flower. Just exactly. as soon as their internet is back. <laughs> Isn't Gavin's sister one of the people for the sequel? Yes, I believe so. Maybe Gavin will make special pop up appearances. We'll see. Yeah, now that I said it, I'm like, I don't need Naomi in a swimsuit. I want to see the candies. I don't care about Naomi and Ashley in a swimsuit. Why didn't we get to see their sandcastles? Do you care about the guys in their swimsuits? I don't care about Teo in the swimsuit. I would have liked to see the plushies. What about Percy and Gavin? What about Queen Bee? Percy was also there. I still prefer the plushies. And I already went over Queen Bee and Gavin. They should have just had action shots of the volleyball. I want to see the volleyball. 
J not even them hitting the volleyball, just the volleyball? I mean, we were gonna see them either way. But seeing the volleyball flying around is way more exciting than seeing them in swimsuits. Come on. Personally, eh, don't really care about the volleyball either. Yeah, but seeing an action shot of them hitting the volleyball is more exciting than swimsuits. It's been a wonderful day, definitely. I was gonna say, what about neither? Hmm? Is neither an option? What's that? You want to remove this scene with two people of color? That's rude no. of you. It is literally not what I meant. I know, but that's the scene where they have two people of color together. Could be a different scene. Okay, where else would we see them interact? Called it's called creation of a different scene. Okay, we're on the beach. Would you have preferred them being swimming in their swimsuits and wet? Why does it have to be at a beach? Because that's where the scene is set. That's where Spunk spent all their uh, childhood vacations. There's only one thing that could improve it. A risk, a daydream. But maybe one worth taking. I happen to know a few things about dreams lately. Do you, Spunk? Do you? Do yeah, you they've spunk? been studying dreamology. Sounds terrifying. Yeah, I know. You want me to ask someone on a date? Only if you want to. I know I was kind of pushy earlier. I'm sorry, but if you want this, now is the moment. Everything in my calculations says that it's the perfect time. I've got a lot going for me, but maybe something's still missing. Something more that I need from life than the warmth of friendship alone. The warmth of a cat. More importantly, maybe one of them feels the same way. Maybe they feel the same yearning. Romance. Love. I'm no stranger to these things. But those were fumbling first attempts. In youth, I could fumble again. Am I ready for this? In youth? I suddenly feel so dramatic right now. I... Well, I'm still considering. How about I run down the data while you're thinking? Let's see. Okay, after my analysis, here's where you stand with everybody and how your personality is shaping up. But now that I've had weeks to understand you better, I think I can adjust these values based on what I know each of them likes in a partner. Gavin values honest and open communication. He's very steady and so are you. <laughs> Ashley Barr Bar doesn't move because you are too close to her. Ashley's an open book, ready to share with anyone. She's very sincere. You're both steady. Queen Bee's got a wicked sense of humor, and your quirky nature matches it. Interesting that it commented on how Ashley is steady, but nothing on quirky. She's more quirky than steady! Percy's determined to live out the rest of his days in good cheer and good humor. Or is it humor with a U? He's British, right? Oh, and quirky, like you. Will it come back to Ashley? See? I mean, just because our highest is quirky. Yeah. Tay is a unique one. He's sincere and open, 
but also loves to joke around. You make a fine dance partner to me here. Quirky and steady. Wait, is he the quirky and steady? What's Ashley? Is she not quirky? No, she has to be. I swear Flower said that she was quirky steady. Watch Flower's been- that was one of Flower's uh, chaotic bad advice. No, I think I saw on the developer blog that Teo was supposed to be steady bold. Have we been playing wrong this entire time? <laughs> if we are, we are. What's the worst that can happen? We have to redo this entire route. That's interesting. Teo was steady gutsy. Ashley is steady quirky. Then why is Teo giving us points for quirky steady? I don't know. And why did we not get points with Ashley for quirky? Is this a bug? Did we find a bug? I don't... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, they, I'm just as confused as you are. And everybody, and that's everybody. In my final analysis, I think you are the best possible match for... Ashley, Ashley, and Ashley. <laughs> okay, they read your line Ashley, properly. Quinn, E, and Gavin. Tay was very close. All three would make a fine companion for you, Spunk. Ashley, Queen, P, and Gavin all get along well with you and match your personality. So, Ashley, Queen, B, and Gavin? Yes, I calculate you'll have the best probability of success with them. Numbers. All based on numbers. High score! Yeah, okay, let's run with this. It's weird. You know what? My life is weird. Surfing a deep wave of weird all the way to the shores of weirdness. So, okay. Hook me up with someone whose numbers match my numbers. I'm ready to go. Great. But uh, I want to make sure you understand what's really going on here. I'm software, right? I have to see the world through numbers. I see your relationship as numbers, I see your vocal tones as numbers, and I score it all. Your vocal scores are pretty low, by the way. But the math is less important than the meaning. I see a number, but that number represents your free will and your heart. You choose to spend time with them. Chose. You shared good times with smiles and laughter, and sometimes even tears. 
this isn't like a dating website. You aren't asking a total stranger out just because the numbers match. You need to switch the casual relationship around. Causal. Whatever. No, that's a very different meaning. Eh. That is a very different meaning. See, Spunk gets me. Congratulations, you get the character that's wrong. I need to ask for a casual relationship. See, I'm Spunk. I am apparently just MC. You know what? I'd ask if I should be Iris then. But, um, no, I'm good. I'll be the other irises. Go on. Correct yourself. Causal, as in the cause of. You aren't spending time with them because of the numbers. The numbers exist because you wanted to spend time with them. You've been building these relationships for months. Now, you can take one to the next level. The numbers can be your guide if you let them. But follow your heart. Above all else, follow your heart, okay? That sounds terrible. Okay, got it. Sounds good. Right, so let's not limit ourselves here. Of all those who are special to you, which one do you want to share your heart with? It's a big decision. But she's right. She's been watching me, listening to me, understanding me. But in the end, it's my choice and their choice to accept my love or not. But which one do I love? Which one should I approach? I feel so cheesy. <laughs> All right, let's ask out Gavin. <laughs> He'll be like, what? Look, he's one of our next highest. That is true. Because he's got the study in common. Mm -mm. Ashley. Her love of life and enthusiasm always managed to lift me up to a whole nother level. I can't imagine not being with her at this point. It's always been Ashley. For several people who have watched us or commented on our stuff, yes. It's all it's always been Ashley. Only one, only Ashley. What are you talking about? The only dateable option is Ashley. Okay, I believe in you, Spunk. I'll be cheering you on from in here. Your pocket. As Iris shuts herself off, the reality of it all strikes me. I'm doing this. I'm actually doing this. It's scary, but with any luck. My heart aches while my entire insides contract in a storm of excitement, nerves, and elation as I begin thinking of how the night will progress. Maybe we'll have a romantic dinner of surf and turf, watch the sunset in each other's arms, then finally stroll under an enchanting moonlit beach and kiss beneath the stars. Why? I chuckle under my breath, realizing Ashley's wild imagination has already rubbed off on me. Why? Please chuckle. Uh. But enough fantasies. I should really stop procrastinating and go and ask her before it's too late. The girls all hanging out together for once. Ashley, Naomi, and Queen Bee are chatting amongst themselves, smiles and laughs aplenty. And now, I have to interrupt the sacred lady circle. Wait, but what if Spunk is also a lady? Still interrupting the circle. I mean, like, in this case, Spunk is non-binary. I'm like, pretty pr pretty sure that girls don't 
call it a sacred lady circle. Because we're also ladies. What? <laughs> mm. But how should I even begin to approach? I can feel the pressure weighing me down as I formulate a way to ask Ashley out on a date. I could always just go in carelessly. Or would it be better if I pulled Ashley aside for a little intimacy? I'm gonna save? Uh, the rule of kindly always apparently wins. What was that? What was that rule? What were you saying? I I'm talking about what they said on their dev blog. Well. The kindly meta. If Ashley and Teo have swapped for this chapter by some bug or miswriting, bold would be the answer. I don't need the kindly meta. I can do my own meta. <laughs> but apparently the, the meta doesn't work with predefined rules. Whatever I saved. There's nothing to fear. These are my friends. The worst thing that could happen is that they'll tease me for the rest of my days if I get rejected by Ashley. They'll never let me live it down and I won't be able to face Ashley at work. Now that I think about it, that is pretty much the worst. Well, too late now and in too deep. There's no turning back. Hi, Ashley. Queen Bee. Naomi. I quickly exchange pleasantries before I lay all my cards on the table. So, Ashley, I was one. Ashley clamps a hand over my mouth, interrupting me. Spong, how about we go talk somewhere else? Somewhere more private and secluded. Away from prying ears and eyes. Okay. I can't understand why I feel so apprehensive. These are all my friends whom I've known for months now. I see them every day. But what I'm about to do is a personal and special thing and the other's presence is not necessary. Just thinking of asking Ashley when she's alone is stressful enough, but adding two more to the mix? No thanks. So I call to her. Hey, Ashley. She turns around to face me. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Spunk. Can I talk to you? Sure. She just stands there, not moving toward me, smiling innocently the whole time. Privately? Oh? Oh! Oh, of course! The kindly meta. I was really hoping for that not to be the case, but I guess sometimes. Ashley steps away from the group and heads in my direction. Queen Bee and Naomi exchange side glances and grins. Also, part of me is like, what, what would dot 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 do? What's that? You want to try getting rid of the kindly answer? Absolutely! My nerves are too much and they are taking over. I just stand there, wanting like a kid outside a candy store. I try to call out to Ashley, but nothing comes out of my mouth. Luckily, saving me from my own embarrassment, Ashley turns around and spots me. Spunk! She waves to me and starts to head in my direction. Queen Bee and Naomi exchange side glances and grins. Uh, I guess we still don't get the point with her. Kindly for the points! You bring her back happier than she is now, you hear? <laughs> Don't stay out too late. Ashley turns around to face them. You two be quiet. I don't need any comments from the peanut gallery. Thank you very much. You don't want any Charlie Brown comments? I've never actually seen anything Charlie Brown related. What? Mm -hmm. All right, Christian school. 
no. Like, and then back to me. Everyone I know, like, from high school and elementary school, flipping loves Peanuts. I just never watched them because my family didn't really watch them. Like, I no, I I'm saying Christian school because, like, I watch stuff in school. I, I think at one time they were going to be playing the Christmas one, but then they... Turned on something else and said, I am the Peanuts Gallery! <gasps> Joe! Hello! You're just in time for our first real date. Oh god. What? Um, my high school band played one of the songs from, I think, the Christmas Charlie Brown movie, or special, or whatever it's called. All right, I got a tattle to Joe because Sharky has never watched anything Peanuts, apparently. No Charlie Brown, nothing. Nothing. No nothing. Snoopy. I know who Snoopy is. Okay, but stops. Snoopy, you have to watch to get the full effect of Snoopy just walking away and then laying on top of his doghouse. That's what dogs do. Is it... Nothing? Nothing. I'm like, Wait, I, I swear I watched some of these in school. I may have seen, like, clips or something, but, like, that might be about it. And even then, I'm like, I don't even know if I, what I would have seen clips of. No pumpkin pie and no peanuts. I know, right? This is why Joe jo says we can't be friends. It's okay. Joe and I can still be friends. Don't you worry about them. <laughs> Such a sheltered shelter shark. What? Would that be sheltered? Sort of? Like, obviously it was on on TV all the time, but like, we never turned it on. We watched other stuff. I rescinded that saving Sharky. Well, sorry. I saw it with the new, uh, peanut statement it was brought back from the table. They just enjoy teething a little poor and helpless me. I think Ashley said that last part just a little too loud on purpose so her friends could hear. So, what's up? Ah, congratulations. Joe is willing to be your friend after all. Don't worry. Something's gonna come out and it's gonna offend you for me not having seen it, seen it. Or whatever. Ashley looks down as she nervously puts her hands in her jean jacket pocket. It looks like she's fiddling with something and I wonder what it could be. No, the thing that would break Joe's heart is if you said that you judged Percy unfairly at the beginning because you just thought of Brian from Dream Daddy instead, instead of letting Percy shine as Percy. Sorry, my brains didn't work right now. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you something. But before I can say the words, Ashley snatches them from my mouth. <laughs> for all your plug, except for that one, if it is true. I mean, you didn't even give Percy a chance at the beginning. You were like, ugh, he reminds me of Brian. I don't like him. It's like, these are different characters. Chill. Percy's way funnier than Brian. It's not hard. He's friendlier, too. Also not hard! 
something something. It was all Santa's fault, actually. Chance with the tiny colorful numbered balls, the bingo cards, and the neon lovers? Hmm. Never seen that word before. Please tell me you're, you've played bingo. I was taken aback at how quickly she changed the topic. I don't know how or what to make of it. I have, but uh, what does that have to do with anything? Not all plus size ginger men are the same! Ginger? <laughs> I mean, yes, they both appear to be plus size ginger men. I don't even remember that about him. Really? Yes. Sorry, I wasn't paying close attention to his hair color. Oh, that's the part you don't remember. Yes! Him so actually, teacher. you weren't being hair colorist. You were being, um, fat phobic. Yes. We should go! Now. Now? Yeah, apparently there's a mo Moose's Lodge in Flotsam. Where there, there's a Moose's Lodge, there's always a bingo night. Moose's? Mises? Mice? What's the plural form here? Pretty sure it's not mice. Anyway, I might have looked at their schedule already and so it's going down tonight. That's totally mice. Will you bingo with me? Yeah, that was definitely a bug when it didn't give us, you know, credit for being quirky with Ashley. <laughs> That's a good joke, though. I groan with extra emphasis to show my displeasure of the pun. But at the same time, it puts a smile on my face. Because there are two of us. I'm the groaning. You're, You're the smiling. I was gonna say, I'm not the one groaning. I'm the groaning. You're the smiling. I'll take that as a yes. You're gonna have so much fun tonight. I'm glad we're getting to spend some time together. At least Ashley wants to spend time with me tonight, I guess. I mean, this is what I wanted, even if it's not exact how I imagined it going. So how have you been, Joe? It's sort of like an informal date. No? But just this right now is enough to make me happy. Yeah, how are you, Joe? And who knows how the rest of the evening will play out. For now, I'm going to focus on having fun with the person I care about. It doesn't take long before we find ourselves outside the makeshift bingo parlor. The Moose's Lodge, like most of them, is a historical brick building, probably dating back to the early 18xxs. Most coastal cities have a hall like this that serves several purposes, ranging from chili cook-offs, community meetings, and apparently bingo nights. It's all right there on the event calendar. Before we walk through the doors, Ashley pulls me aside. Watch out for the old ladies. I practically choke on my own laughter. I think I can manage walking a few old ladies across the street if need be. Oh, no, 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 no. But I did want to say hi to some of my favorites. Hmm? I feel like there was some message that didn't go through. It's either that or a message got put in the wrong box. 
or that. Either way. Hmm? Either way. Hmm? But hi. <laughs> favorite what? Favorite streamers? Favorite characters? Favorite game? But we didn't hang out with Queen Bee and Percy today. Let me type that. Type it again. Okay. They will take you down. They are ruthless biddies that don't take kindly to us young people. We are immature hooligans in their cataracted eyes. You're stepping on their turf, and they will hate us for it. Oh no. We're getting an advance peek at the gang wars. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, the old lady gang. Yep. Where's where Francine to protect us? I wasn't planning on having puncture wounds via knitting needle for bruises from a walker running to my shins. Should we have brought Francine? Sounds like she would fit in with this crowd. She will give us a very good end. She can have her pose as our higher as our high roller. Bingo, high roller, bingo, loving grandmother. Everyone get harassed. Oh, yes, we did not get Aww. the I'm sleepy. I slept like shit last night, not staying Aww. long. But we're glad that you dropped in anyway. That's very yeah. touching, actually. I'm sorry that you didn't get good sleep, but we're happy for you to be here for however long that you can stay. Hope you yeah. sleep better tonight. Yeah. Sleeping badly. Ugh. And you are some of my favorites. Oh. Thanks. Yes, stay in is some of your favorites. Hmm? <laughs> no, Satan just tattles on Sharky, you know. As I said, you're one of her favorites. I'm the outcast. For tattling? No, for existing. I can't be anyone's favorite just for existing. No, I said I'm an outcast for existing. No, you're an outcast for judging Percy. Before giving but him a chance. I, but honestly, I'm rather fond of the idea of just us. Playing bingo, taking out all the old people who get in our way, and winning big. Was that supposed to be flirty? Hmm? Was that supposed to be flirty? We're on an informal date, question mark? So it will be us then. We can invite Francine next time. Wink. She can have a few people. Oh no, the sand is still in her eye from when she was on the beach. The Afghanistan. Deal. Together, we push open the doors and instantly our senses are assaulted. The smell of ancient powdery floral perfume blended with mothballs stings our nostrils. Our eyes blink to get used to the obnoxiously fluorescent light. And there is a sea of shawls, jeweled brooches, and spectacles with beaded chains as far as the eyes can see. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sharky no longer hates Percy. I hope. Don't hate Percy. The only character so far I actively hate in the dating sim has been Brian. And Toma doesn't count because he's just a demon. Excuse me. I am insulted by the insinuation. Have, have a good night. Good night, Joe. Thanks for dropping by. We appreciate it. Yee. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I was gonna make a joke of like, man, how would how would Infinistan work as an emote? Just a splash of sand. The Infinisand has attacked a character. And it says Infinisand. 
Hard, 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 hard. Hearts everywhere. I think that's one very big heart, actually. Or a lot of scoops of ice cream on a sideways cone. But then that would fall! Not if it's on a frozen table. Anti-griddle. What? There's a thing called, um, I think it's called an anti-griddle. You know what a griddle is, right? Yes. So an anti-griddle is like that, but cold. Very, very uh. cold. And there's, uh. um, where did it come from? I forget. But there's some, uh, Asian ice cream fad that has made its way over here in the past several years of, like, basically mixing up an ice cream mixture and then laying it flat on an anti-griddle over and over and, like, rolling it up so you have these, like, rolled up sheets of freshly frozen ice cream. Interesting. It's cool. It's, um... Not part of it. More of more for show, I want to say. Um, at the end eating? of the day, it's just an ice cream mixture. But it's an interesting shape. It's fun to watch. And then they put stuff on top. Or stuff into it. Sometimes they put stuff in. But does it taste better? As I said, it's just a different shape of ice cream. But they make each serving for like each person individually one by one which also means that it's really expensive for ice yeah. cream but it's trendy and fun looking and i don't know it's a nice treat once in a while i haven't had it in years but you know it's a fun treat we are immediately met with harsh glares from everyone in the room, all of which a combined median age of 76. I hear them scorn us under their breath and watch them shake their heads incredulously at the sight of us. We won't be making friends here. The audacity of the young folk today is downright ridiculous. I'm sorry, do you want to read that again in your old lady impression? No. Do it anyway. I don't have an old lady impression. I'm waiting. I said I don't have an old lady impression! What's your Francine impression? I don't have one! Make one. But I made one for Francine, come on. But this isn't Francine! This is actually. Yeah in an old lady impression, so. So what did I have to do a voice? Do a voice at that point? Hmm? Not just do a voice, I'd have to do a voice doing the voice? Uh, yes, you would be doing a voice doing a voice. So, go on. Why do you do this to me? Because I'm reading what the thing says and then adjusting there... accordingly. What I did was fine. Hmm? What I did was fine. No. Because it doesn't match what the text said. Also, are you really going to complain about having to do an Ashley impersonation of an old woman when I have to do Francine, Hamza, Percy? You do a really good Percy. Not really, but okay. The point remains. I have to do fancy different voices all the time. You can and stand you're good at to it. read one fucking line. And you're good at it. You can stand to read one fucking line of Ashley impersonating an old lady. Come on. Uh... 
Oh, the audacity of the young folk today is downright ridiculous. And Spock plays it right back. It's atrocious, really. I'm sorry, where was the... I play it right back? Yeah, I played it right back. I'm waiting. It's atrocious, really. The hall itself wasn't too fancy and held everything one needed for bingo night. Tables and chairs and bingo cage and an army of daubers. Ashley and I made our way up to the main desk and got in line, waiting to purchase all our necessary bingo supplies. While paying the buy-in fee to contribute to the prize pool, Ashley instructed me in the mysterious ways of bingo. I remember Juniper and I played a few times as kids, but it was never for money or competitive. Okay, so, wow, she's still winking. Can't tell if this is a bug or just the that sand, sand is has... really bad. You know, we were on the beach all day, after all. The fitness sand has caught hold. She did mention that there's sand everywhere in places that it shouldn't be. That is true. Like her eyes. Okay. So first up are the bingo play cards. You can either get them as a single, a set of three, or a pack of nine. I'm going all out with a nine pack. Knowing me, I only be able I'll only be able to pay attention to half of them. But the odds are of winning are greater. And I do still love winning. How much do you think you can handle, Spunk? Ah, she stopped winking. Only to wink again. Well, um... I'll set off the ring! Are we still going with steady? Why not? It was the great Buddha that taught about the middle path, a way between extremes. And right now that speaks to my gambling style. One is too few to be fun, and nine way too many to keep track of. Three sounds pleasantly perfect. A logical choice. Now, I need you to mentally prepare yourself for this part, next part. I'm also like, hmm, come to think of it. They describe study as, like, logical, basically, at the beginning. Um, but I feel like, actually, uh, when they're applying it to the characters, they've described it instead as open and honest. Which is interesting. This game is interesting. It is interesting, and it'll continue being interesting for all of the playthroughs that we still have to go. It will be the most difficult choice you'll ever make. I'm worried. Should I be worried? I missed the whole life or death aspect in previous bingo games with Jennifer. I've been doing it wrong the entire time? The tire uh, tire time? What? The, the tire time? I didn't know we were on a tire. Yes, didn't you know? Everything is just one tire. Are we on a unicycle? No. We're on a tricycle. Just on one wheel of it. If I choose wrong, will they throw us out, throw us into a pit of bingo balls that we suffocate due to the choking hazards? Relax, Spunk. I just need you to choose out your dauber color. No. But you can't choose blue. That one is mine. 
Ashley snatches up a blue dagger from the lineup and cradles it protectively in her arms. The colors themselves are all obnoxiously bright neon, which just remind me of all the lights in the funplex. And since radioactive blue has already been spoken for, I'll choose... My heart went red. But Pinky the Flamingo is pink. Do you get points for this? I don't know. Why do you think I saved? I thought it was just like... A choice that like doesn't matter. Oh, Does this matter? I'm now so confused. You know what? Her other cosplay mascot thing has green and, or not green, blue and pink. So I'm kind of leaning towards pink, especially because it's pinky, the flamingo. Okay. And that's the other part of her color scheme. Ah, pink, a color of compassion and kindness. I mean, you know me, I wouldn't be picking pink without a reason. No, you totally, you love the color <clears throat> pink. I do love the pink of burning flesh, you're right. The old um, ladies will be so blinded by my love of bingo, they won't stand a chance. This color will surely lead me to big money with a capital B and a capital M. That's the bingo spirit! After getting our supplies, we find a place to sit down. Unfortunately, the only space for both of us is right in the middle of the room, surrounded by a swarm of old ladies. Like a walk of shame, I can feel all eyes on us as we get settled in. Curses of whippersnappers and impudent children are flung our way. Unaffected by the abuse, we put our daubers at the ready and our bingo cards in front of us. Be ready for when they start calling numbers. They're awfully quick. I nod to Ashley. I mean, how hard could it be? One of the people from the front desk takes their position at the ball cage and begins churning it. Butter. This is not butter. I can't believe it's not butter. Wow. Put onto your butts. Here we go. Are we gonna have to remember a bunch of things? I don't know. Let's go. Like the cafe order back in um. Amnesia. In a cafe order we had to remember? With a quickness I've never experienced, the caller begins shouting out numbers. B6, G52, O74, N36, I21. The numbers hit me fast, like punches to the gut. I try desperately to keep up, making messy pink blobs on the paper. Rob, 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 rob. Do you have them memorized? Axel? Sorry, that's not my name. Okay, Sharky. Got it memorized? No. I'm stuck in Cast Oblivion. Do you? 6, 21, 36, 52, 74. 6, 21, 36, 52, 74. I mean, we, I don't think we'll actually have to remember it. You say that now. I'm gonna save again. I could feel myself slipping behind the rest. Wait, did they say G50 or G60? Uh, maybe G50? what I put down. I thought the only number I was 100% sure I got was the free space. <laughs> Glancing over to the, uh, to the old biddies, they brandished their daubers like katanas. And much like an Aaron Ronan, whose dishonor leaves them unafraid of death, 
their strikes were swift and true. Years of playing bingo meant they had honed their skills to mastery. It was merely muscle memory at this point. I can't keep up. It's too much. Ashley was frantically trying to dob nine cards at once, her finger tracing down the column with the letter called. I was having a tough time myself, but the challenge mixed with the confusion of everything left us both in smiles and laughter. I'm just going to dob a smiley face on this next one. There is no point. I'm too far gone at this point. Even though we weren't winning, we were having a blast. Our giggling and boisterous joy wasn't well received by our neighbors, however. And even though they would never disgrace themselves by yelling at us, their rolling eyes and frowns were scolding enough to know their true feelings. After matches ending in failure and blotches of pink ending everywhere but the bingo card, we got down to the last game of the night. A blackout match. A blackout pattern means all our numbers have to get called to win. We gotta cover that card in ink. This is our last chance for winning, yeah? You know it, and I'm not giving up. One of us has to win, or all of this frustration will be for naught. It won't be all for naught. I'm having a really great time with you, Ashley. Okay, but winning! Oh, Spunk, I... The collar starts in again. Numbers are even faster now, and my focus is at its peak. As each new number gets called, my stress meter goes up just a little more. Still stressed, still sexy. But are we well, though? No longer sexy. They're not in their bathing suits anymore. It isn't before long that I notice both my and Ashley's cards are filling up fast. At this rate, we might even have a chance of winning the prize money. Did you say the characters are only sexy when they're in bathing suits? I assume that's the point of the bathing suit chapter. I don't know. But wouldn't they have some appeal at other times too? What if I have no attraction to them at any point? Because we're easy. Then you made this channel for a reason. I did. Because it's silly. Oh man, I only need one to get one more number. I look at my own card to compare. Me too. Only one left. One of us might actually pull this off. The next number is called N31. And the next thing I hear is... BINGO! I can't believe it, but the words are coming from my own mouth! I jump up in excitement and do a little victory dance. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Yes! Gotta go up to the front so they can verify you weren't cheating! You do so look suspicious. Is it the hoodie? It's gotta be the hoodie. I make my way to the collar and after a minute, everything checks out. I'm handed a big pile of cash, the money from the prize pot. Triumphantly, I allow myself one making it rain moment when I return to Ashley. I did it. I can't believe I actually won. Yeah, I can't believe it either. Why, you thought Ashley was gonna win? Hmm? You thought Ashley was gonna win? I can. Now that you're super weird, rich, what do you plan on doing with all those winnings? I'm glad you asked, Ashley, because I'm taking you out for dinner. But you earned it. You should spend it on something else. Don't worry about it, Ashley. Dinner's on me. You don't have to do that, Spunk. I know, but I want to. Actually, you're special to me. And I want to treat you to something nice. So let's go get some pancakes. Mmm, pancakes. Yum. 
if you're sure. I'm sure. Well, if that's the case, we're going to the Flavorville Buffet. It's my favorite restaurant. They just opened one here. What, we're going to Flavortown? Are we visiting Guy Fieri? All oh, right, he's a person. He is a Forgot person. About him. Any food sounds like good food at this point. I'm famished. Good. Because once you go to Flavorville Buffet, you'll never want to go to any other restaurant again. I just want to read that as Flavortown. Well, sorry. You yell at me if I change the line slightly. Mm hmm? I highly doubt that, but I'm willing to even try. I mean, if you did it very intentionally to make a reference, I wouldn't be yelling. I wouldn't make that reference because I don't really know that reference. I don't know what you expect from me. I expect more wine. Sorry. I can't just hand out free wine. Well, it's a good thing I have some then. We say adieu to the Moose's Lodge and make our way downtown to Flavorville. Oh, hey, it's here! <laughs> We're using art and date. Hmm? Did you forget? You forgot, didn't you? I guess I'm not surprised the Flavorville Buffet is packed at this time of night. It's one of the only restaurants still open in Flotsam. Welcome to Flavorville. Population us. Well, us and everyone else. All sorts of people are eating here, from the punk teenagers trying to stay out late to avoid responsibilities, to the well-aged biker gang, to the couples having a relaxing di and relaxing dinner out. It wouldn't be my first choice for a date, nor my third, but it was Ashley's choice, and whatever makes her happy makes me happy, which means that this was actually the second choice. As we are led to our table, we pass by aisles of buffet tables filled to the brim with every food imaginable. Ashley's eyes go wide with excitement. Once at our table, we take a moment to order drinks before Ashley jumps up, ready to devour everything in sight. Don't eat the table and chairs. Everything in sight! Amazing! Are we gonna get eaten? I can neither conform nor deny this, uh, theory. Because I haven't seen it myself. What? Because I haven't seen it myself. Look at all the food! I'm gonna eat it all. Oh, what did, do I start with? Tacos? Waffles? Ice cream? Fried ice cream waffles made into tacos? Yum. Spog, there are too many choices! I say go with your favorites first? Dessert it is. Ashley points in the direction of the smor smorgasbord of sweets. Smorgasbord. It's it's misspelled. Eh. Does it matter? Yes, it does. Man, you would love playing pizza game then. Hmm? Your brain would get destroyed. What? So there's a game. For pizza game. And every sentence is terribly wrong. Words misspelled, 
grammar just up the wazoo. I don't think you understand. There are some dating games I have that I've played only minutes of because they're badly translated. And I can't look past it easily. It hurts too much, I can't play. As long as it gets the point across. No. No. Where were your editors? Where were the proofreaders? Nowhere. <sighs> to the dessert bar! We each grab a plastic tray and proceed to shuffle down the feud food queue with the rest of the people. Man, I haven't been to a buffet in years. And now I definitely can't go to one because of COVID. Yeah, I don't remember the last time I was at a buffet. Actually, yes, I can. January. Oh? Uh, when I was on the trip with my best friend. Oh, right. I was not aware that you went to a buffet during that. That's cool. I mean, where we were staying at a small buffet. Hmm. So we did that for like one of our meals or two of our meals, I forgot. Both Ashley and I fill up our trays with a plethora of treats, brownies, cakes, cookies, and an ice cream sundae made to our own perfections. Which is to say more cake. Quickly, we return to our table with a mountain of goodies and dig in. Nom, 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 nom. Oh man, we made out like bandits. Look at the sugary goodness. Sugar. I share bites from everything, tasting it all, even though it implied that we both got like the same things. And all of it is delicious. Maybe it's due to working up a huge appetite from all that intense bingo. But I wouldn't expect such a flavor, such flavor from a local beach buffet. I guess that's why it, they call it Flavorville. It's a vill full of flavor and it ain't f fucking shitting around about that. We talk of the day's events and smile happily in each other's company. Every time Ashley and I get together, it's like this. Endless fun. Being with her brings me such joy. Eventually our momentum slows and we have half-eaten desserts strewn across the table. I feel a distinct sense of pride at eating nothing even vaguely resembling actual nutrition. I'm so stuffed. I don't think I could eat another pie. Literally just dessert. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a good dinner. <sighs> Ashley digs her fork deep into a partially eaten brownie, and as she relaxes into her chair, I see her attitude shift. Huh. While we were gambling and fending off old ladies, Ashley was nothing but laughter and happiness. But now, as I watch, her smile leaves, replaced by a wistful frown while she looks sullenly down at the brownie. I wonder what's changed from just a little bit ago? I could do something to cheer her up, maybe. What? Ashley's love of food is only matched by her creativity. Maybe if we combine those two passions, she'll cheer up. Hey, see those pile, piles of butter cubes over there? Yeah. I say we get a whole boatload of them. Sculpt a bust of Gavin. Post it to my face, hashtagging it to Hell. And back. Wait, but my face isn't face wall. Well yeah, you're posting it to a, a dead site. But then what's the point of hashtagging it? Does that site even support hashtags? Does it matter? Ashley can't help but crack a smile at the thought of a butter bust of the most serious employee of the Funplex. I'm gonna put that idea in my pocket for now. 
It's a very tempting offer, and I want nothing more than to spread images of Butter Gavin throughout the complex, but my heart's just not in it. Ashley's gaze leaves the mess of a brownie, and she looks directly into my eyes. Have you ever had to do something that you know will end in failure, but you know you have to you have to, to do it anyway? Of course. Remember when we went to Max? Ashley nods her head. That ran rampant throughout my through my thoughts the entire day. I thought for sure it was going to end with nothing accomplished. I was dead set that it it Sharky just blue screened. Error. Sharky's still talking. Can you still hear me? What? Can you still hear me? No, I can hear. I meant I my brain blue screened. Ah. Well, um, one moment while I reboot Sharky. Power off. Like Power I said, on. Uh, people at my workspace are joking that I'm a robot, and one of them was like, how do we reinstall your operating system? I was like, I don't know. Figure out what operating system I'm even on. I don't know. What operating system are you on? Sharky OS version 0.1. But you were number... something with four digits. It should be past <laughs> point 0.1 for, by now. Something with four digits. I think it was at like 2,678 or something like that. I know there was a 678 in there. I, it was over 2,000. Well, it was not 3,000, so it was 2,678. Okay. So there you go. But I'm still on Sharky version 1.1. Why? Because the OS hasn't been updated in a while. Well, no wonder they want to reinstall your OS then. They gotta update it. I mean, how does a, sh how does a Sharky get updates? From the internet. But I'm not Wi-Fi capable. And I think I lost my Ethernet before. Hmm. I don't know. I was dead set that it, it trickled down and caused the absolute ruin of some arcade event. I was scared. You were there for me that day. You helped me overcome those fears, and everything turned out cheeky in the end. I put my hands on Ashley's and squeezed them assuredly. You're braver than you think, Ashley. What do you mean? She went very quickly from distressed face to plushy face! Plushy smiley face! In everything you do, you've always shown me courage. From dealing with rats at the funplex, to dressing up for cosplay, to confronting all the old biddies at bingo. That is bravery. One sec, my cat is distressed. And it's not Mog this time. Fresh, 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 fresh. Fresh, 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 fresh. Oh, 
Me and my two cats. You're so strong and quirky. Quirky. And wonderful and amazing. And I look. I hastily cut myself off and divert my eye contact. What was I thinking? What was I doing? I can't just go around spurting things like that without knowing Ashley's side of everything. My face is a rush of red and so is Ashley's at this point. And I feel like I've just ruined everything, similar to my other romantic relations. Ashley once again fidgets with something in her jacket pocket and I wonder what she's hidden away. Hey, let's get out of here. I need some fresh air to clear my head. This place is suffocating. Ashley and I are on the same page. I know a place that's a perfect getaway. By all means, take me there. I pick up the check, and once our financial responsibilities are settled, we head for the beach. Sign and dash! More Infinisand time. The Infinisand! We found the source! It's the beach. The nighttime beach is such a stark contrast of the day. Not a soul in sight, the beach is completely dead. It's cooled off enough to don a sweatshirt too, or at least not to be in your beach skivvies. Everything is remarkably brilliant thanks to being bathed in moonlight. And Ashley's moonlit profile is the same as all of the other times, but somehow more stunning. We stood mostly in silence, save for the sure is nice out here and other trivial exchanges. I could feel the awkward tension mounting as Ashley kept fumbling with the thing in her pocket and her facial expressions kept changing. This isn't how I pictured this night to end up, both of us floundering around with nothing to say. I was about to chalk this up as another failure, another unrequited love or unrequited experience. Happy endings aren't for the Cranklebottom family. Hmm? I'm sorry. What were you saying? I said that name. The Cranklebottom family. Huh? Sorry for what? Sorry for being me. Sorry for being awkward and weird this whole evening. I just... Why? You just what? Ashley digs her hands into her jean jacket pocket and pulls out a sheet of paper. I just feel like everything leading up to this moment has been a mess. I wrote you this letter and I haven't been able to muster enough courage to read it to you. You wrote me a letter? Yeah, how old school is that, right? Can I read it to you? Of course. Ah. Even though I'm dreading the worst, I can't deny Ashley this opportunity to express herself. It wouldn't be fair to her at all. Not after everything we've shared. Please do. I'm genuinely interested in what you have to say. Okay. I can do this. Ashley takes a second to uncrumple the wad of paper before starting. Here is Spunk. I can hear the shakiness in her voice. Shake more. Shake, shake. Shake, shake. Sorry, my booty don't move like that. I didn't say anything about your booty. My heart leaps at the thought that maybe this will turn out alright. But how many conversations end well when the threat of we should talk looms overhead? Just imagine if we were named Spank right now. Here is Spank. Every conversation with Gavin would just feel really awkward. Hello, Spank. How do you do? I studied my heart and activated my defense barrier, ready for the onslaught. Right off the bat, I want to make one thing clear. You are the most amazing person I have ever met. I have never known anyone as unabashedly wonderful, funny, and kind-hearted as you. I don't know, we're not that kindly. Just knowing you has changed my life so significantly that words cannot even begin to explain how much you mean to me. 
You bring me so much happiness, and I adore spending every minute with you. Even if some of it involves chasing children around at the complex. You lift me up and inspire me to be a better person. I can't help it, but every time I look at you, my heart skips a beat, and I feel warm and fuzzy. You are my everything. My favorite color, my favorite person, my favorite song. She looks up from the paper earnestly. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is... I love you. Like... I love you a lot. I'm completely taken aback, and all I can do is listen while she continues to read out loud. But I know I'm not normal. Not that I know what normal is, anyway. I mean, who really does, right? It's taken me a lot of introspection and looking at my entire life to bring me to this point. And you are so very important to me. That's why I'm sharing this with you. I trust you. As you know, I've been struggling with my identity. This is something that I've been dealing with for as long as I can remember. None of that has changed, honestly. I still don't know either way. I just know I don't see myself as 100% woman, nor 100% man. I knew there was meaning to the colors. Some days I feel like a lady, being fierce and feminine. Other days I feel like a boy, laid back and carefree. Not to say that... <laughs> Not to say that these are the only distinctions. Sometimes I feel like an effeminate boy, too. It's not as simple as man or, or woman, male or female. Maybe I'll never have the proper explanation or words that define me. And that's okay. I've realized that I am me, and I don't want to change that. I want to continue to be who I've been. I am Ashley Wolf. And I want to continue to grow and learn more about myself. And I really love for you to be by my side and go on this journey with me. Ashley folds up the letter and slides it back into her pocket. So, now that I've gone and completely opened my heart to you, that's it. That's me. Thank you for listening. I don't like that neither of these are her traits, because I feel like basic is not the right answer here. But it could be. But I don't know. Much I as I know. hate it, I feel like kind is the right answer here. Kind matter does exist. <sighs> I mean... When they said the kind meta, it's slightly different than that, but yeah, kind of. I honestly thought this was going to end in hellfire and being alone, but oh, how I was wrong. I've never been happier to be wrong. I think I love her more than ever. Ashley, thank you so much for sharing all this with me. <laughs> It takes so much trying to put yourself out there like you did. I'm touched. Truly. There's the plus. And there's the cops. No, it's probably fire engine. Ashley smirks and leans in close. My heart pounds as she leans in and kisses me gently. I also don't know where her denim ja like vest jacket thing went, and where they got this towel from. Magic. Come on.
come to think of it, where'd they put their shoes? Magic. And I guess Spunk must have changed, but uh, must have now changed back. Magic. Also, it's funny because I made Spunk to look like you, but they do not look at all like you, actually. No. No. <laughs> at least here. No. I feel like on the character creation screen it was closer, but here, no, not at all. I wrap my arms around her waist and reciprocate the tender moment. I kiss her back passionately. All of my built-up emotions and kinetic tension release as we embrace. Her lips are soft and warm, and I smile happily as we continue kissing. Ashley pulls back from me and gently puts her hand up to my face. She smiles lovingly. Before we get into the deep, I just want to make sure you're okay with this. Can you accept me for me? Of course I accept you. I love you, Ashley. Ashley hugs me tightly and gives me another peck. I love you so much. You mean so much to me, too. I could never say it as eloquently as you, but the feelings are there. You're so very special to me, Spunk. As you are to me. We spent the rest of the night among the moon and stars, chatting, enjoying each other's company, and, of course, exchanging kisses and tender moments. But when I first thought of how this was going to go down, I would n have never imagined it ending like this. Huh. I guess I did get my happy ending. And that's how Ashley and I found each other. I had called our lunchtime party the high water mark, one perfect moment in time. But I was wrong. This was it. And in the difficult weeks ahead, I'd cling to that high water mark in the hopes the wave would roll my way again. It can be both. It should be both, in fact. Level. Level. Sorry. Well, well, you want to vote? You want to go? Go! Level has taken us two hours. Level has taken us two hours, yes. And we didn't even do the whole level today. It was mostly that day. Level five of Arcade Spirits completed. So far, you scored 16,650 points. You're winning friends and influencing people. Influencing people? Are we an influencer? No, we're some randos on the internet. Okay, is Spunk an influencer? No, he's a rando on the internet. He? I'm sorry, they. Excuse you. They are a rando on the internet. Oh! And pizza track time! Through the top 10 weeks of pizza consumption occur in January, more pizzas consumed during the big game week than any other week of the year. I am like that whole touching letter where Ashley basically comes out to us as pangender, and you fuck up our pronouns. Tisk, tisk, tisk. You want to save your game for Pristina level 6? Yes. Yes. And then we should stop, probably. Yes. Thanks uh, to anyone who watches this later. Anybody who might be watching now. If anyone is here. Yeah. Besides us. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.